Guild Wars 2 needs more guides, so I'm here to teach you how to play Heal Quickness Firebrand without breaking your brain. Hopefully. This is a group PvE build for raids, strikes, and fractal gamers will also love you. Firebrand has fallen a little out of favour for raids and strikes recently, despite more or less only being buffed for quite some time, but it still has access to literally every boon in the game, except alacrity that would be illegal. Believe it or not, jail, right away. In differing amounts, with full uptime of most of them. It has particularly insane stability and aegis output, making it able to negate a ridiculous amount of mechanics and damage for its subgroup. Firebrand, or Guardian in general really, also has really good flexibility in terms of the tools it can bring, which makes it one of the most satisfying classes to really delve into and learn every facet of. If any of that was unintelligible nonsense to you, it might help to check out the start of my druid guide for a bit more of a look at what a healer does in Guild Wars 2, as well as a bonus simple little method for learning a new build. This build uses every healer's favourite uh, full harriers gear. You can replace the backpack with a Magi's piece if you're really trying to optimize and all of your gear is ascended, as we will slightly overcap our boon duration when we add in the concentration sigils and runes of the water. Our weapons are Axe and Shield for CC, boon coverage, Aegis and projectile hate, along with Staff which has a couple of very strong burst heals, Might Gen and a CC skill. Both sets will use Transference and Concentration sigils. The Relic is Relic of the Flock, seriously this thing is so good on this build. I recommend the Snowcrow's traits as a starting point, though I personally recommend Stalwart Speed for new Firebrands, and as you play more you will likely end up with your own particular preferences. I swear every Firebrand main I've ever talked to has had a slightly different build. This being a beginner's guide, I won't go over every possible alteration you can make to the build because we would probably be here all day. Uh, but that stuff is pretty easy to understand once you have the build down. With this setup, you provide quickness through two skills and a couple of traits, give full uptime of all the main boons, and provide good healing that has potential to be great. We also have options to deal with almost any mechanic, as we have two spare utility slots and a very, very powerful range of skills to put in them. Honestly, it's kind of easier to list the things Guardian can't do than what it can do. On top of the baseline Guardian utility skills, Firebrand has access to Tomes, which replace your usual Guardian virtues. They still have the passive effects, but using them will open the corresponding Tome instead of just being a single skill that goes on cooldown. You have a Fiery Damage Tome, a very, very strong Healing Tome, and the Courage Tome, which is all about blocking or mitigating things in various ways. Those two free utility slots I mentioned can be filled with various skills, depending on your preference or what the encounter calls for. I'll briefly go over my top recommendations for new Firebrand players. Firstly we have Bow of Truth, this is a large AoE heal over time, which has two charges. I recommend taking this on any fight that requires a lot of burst healing, or if you think you just want a panic heal button to help prop you up while you're learning. Advance is a very wide AoE Aegis and Swiftness application with two charges on a pretty short recharge. It's pretty hard to take the skill off your hotbar once you get used to using it, it's so good. Stand Your Ground would be your usual choice for a dedicated stability ability. It has a short cooldown, gives multiple stability stacks for a very long time, and has the same radius as Advance. Don't bother with this if there are no knockdowns or other interrupts in the fight. Mantra of Lore makes regen uptime a non-issue, where it can otherwise be a bit of a mission to upkeep for new firebrands and experienced firebrands, don't look at me. It's also your strongest option for a dedicated condition cleanse skill. Using all three charges will cleanse a total of 9 conditions per target on a 20 second cooldown. The last skill I'll mention in this section is Sanctuary. This funny little projectile blocking bubble is actually one of the strongest CC skills in the game. It's meant to just push enemies out of it, but since bosses can't be pushed, it does defiance bar damage for its duration. You don't have a ton of CC without this skill, so definitely bring it on any fight where everyone is expected to do a lot of CC. Try to think about what you want or need for each encounter and pick the appropriate combination of two of these skills to fill your spare utility slots. They are all strong and easy to use, and they do tend to be a good pick even if a different one might be slightly better. Basically, you'll struggle to go wrong if you bring any two of these, so try not to overthink it. Other than my aforementioned recommendation of stalwart speed instead of weighty terms, 
I generally don't recommend making too many changes to the traits in the build until you've learned the gameplay basics and how to upkeep all of your boons, as you can easily start dropping might or other important boons frequently if you're not comfortable with the pseudo rotation. For gearing alternatives, you can use Mace instead of Axe for less CC but more Aegis and healing. It's nice to have both of these to try out, but I do find myself bringing Axe for most fights, as the extra healing from Mace is nice, but it's really needed per se. If you bring a Mace, you should swap the trait Lesser Protector's Restoration for Invigorated Bulwark, otherwise you're not really getting as much value from bringing Mace. Also, Axe puts its symbol in front of you instead of on you, which is really really nice for when you're tanking. Before we move on to the opener and general gameplay, we need to have a tome talk. The Guardian Profession mechanic is its virtues, which are three passive skills that have an active component, kind of like a signet if you've used those skills. Firebrands, however, basically have three extra weapon sets hiding underneath these buttons. Every skill from a tome costs either one or two pages, which are these little white squares to the side of your tome buttons. Every tome has skills that are relevant to this build, but there are a few that are definitely a waste of pages. These will take a bit of memorizing. The first tome is generally damage related, which might make you think it's not all that relevant to us, but we always use three of these skills every fight, and a fourth for CC on any fight that needs it. So, tome one. Skill one is a very underwhelming damage skill, it's generally not worth the page. Skill two is a blast finisher. If you don't know about combo fields and finishes, there are lots of guides on combos, so I won't go into extensive detail here. Skill 3 is a decent CC that pulls towards the center, very good for killing your DPS with Seekers on Veil Guardian. Skill 4 is a fire combo field, and skill 5 gives a burst of might in a large radius. Tome 2 is our healing tome. Being a healer, every skill in this book is pretty useful to us. Skill 1 is just a nice chunky heal. Skill 2 is an AoE heal and condition cleanse, which heals for more for each condition it cleanses. If it cleanses the maximum 3 conditions, the heal is pretty damn impressive. Skill 3 is regen, and it's going to be a main source of regen if you didn't bring Mantra of Law or Mace. Skill 4 is an AoE heal and a water field. And lastly, for this book, skill 5 converts five conditions into boons for your subgroup. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. And it also applies a buff to them, which increases healing by a whole third for eight seconds. This is your biggest kind of, oh shit, I need to heal things button. Your third tome is sort of the mitigation related tome. It has some pretty good buttons. Skill one though, not really one of them. Your subgroup will already have those boons. Skill two, it's a taunt, which applies a good amount of CC over time, and this skill in particular has a really short cooldown. Skill 3 is an awesome projectile reflection skill with a short cooldown. Skill 4 is a personal stun break, along with AoE resistance, which is a powerful boon that negates the effects of things like cripple, blind, and slow. Very useful if you know you're going to be hit with these conditions, as they won't mess with you or the rotations of your DPS players while you cast your cleansers. Then we have skill 5. If you thought the skill 5 from the last home was crazy, this one's pretty crazy too. It gives Aegis and stability, along with a whopping 300 toughness for a short duration. Always make sure to check your tank's toughness though, How tough are you? because you can and will steal the boss aggro for 5 seconds if their toughness is within 300 of yours. Ask them to be tougher, and if they can't toughen up, try not to use this skill. Now it's time to cover the opener. An important thing I didn't actually mention in this section of my druid guide is the boon rip that occurs at the start of all raid fights and most other boss fights, including at least one fractal boss. It's important to wait for this boon rip to occur, otherwise all your skills are going to be on cooldown and your subgroup is not going to have boons. For our firebrand opener, we are going to start on staff. On our way to the boss, we'll throw down staff 3 to help everyone get there quicker and also use the elite skill, Feel My Wrath. Then start spamming all of the mantra skills you brought with you. Your mantras are roughly the shape of the cones they show, but there's a bit of leeway around your character model and to the sides of the cone. When you're in position, cast staff 4 and finish casting any remaining mantra charges. If you didn't bring mace or mantra of lore, 
hop into Tome 2 and give Regen via Skill 3. After this your party will have a full complement of boons, and from here on out it's just about keeping them up. To upkeep quickness, use your elite skill and quickness mantra off cooldown. The only situation where it's worth holding charges on your quick mantra are when there's an upcoming boon rip like on Doom Big Dips, or when your party is split doing mechanics. These two will just barely upkeep quickness on their own, but we have two other sources of quickness that we should be using to try and build up a buffer. Casting your heal skill will give quickness in a decent radius. Note this quickness is just a circle. It doesn't need to be aimed, but the other boons from your heal skill still do. Try to keep this skill at one charge. This will ensure you're triggering the quickness trait frequently, and you'll have easy access to the Aegis which comes from the final cast of the mantra. Using all of these effectively will mean your subgroup should pretty easily reach the full duration of 30 seconds of quickness, which means that mistakes later or time off group are less impactful or don't affect your uptime at all. Might and regen if you're not bringing Mantra of Law or Mace are probably the two boons that require the most attention in this build. Though we can burst Might up very quickly through skills like Staff 4, our Quickness Mantra and our Fire Tome, Using all of these at once will generally result in wasted might stacks and dips. A simple way to help with this is to keep weapon swapping off cooldown, and use staff 4 whenever you're on staff, and then this fire tome combo whenever you're on axe. It's important to always use the 4 skill before the 2 skill and fire tome, or you'll only just do a little bit of damage and you won't generate any burns. If you want to learn all about how combos work in Guild Wars 2, there are a ton of guides out there to teach you how they all work and what they all do. For our purposes, you just need to know that skill 4 before skill 2 makes might. Between this and your quickness mantra, along with any extra might generated by your subgroup, your uptime should be fine. If there's little or no might gen anywhere else in your party, you may find your might stacks falling off. If this happens, try to use Axe 3, Shield 5, and Staff 5 off cooldown, as they will trigger extra might from a trait. And make sure you are hitting the boss as often as possible to trigger empowering might. Ensuring all of your symbols always hit the boss is a big part of triggering this as frequently as possible. Additionally, if you use your Fire Tome late in your Axe part of your rotation, you can swap directly to Staff afterwards and blast the Fire Field a second time with Staff 2. For regen, we just need Mantra of Law. If you didn't bring it because you felt other options were better, make sure to use Tome 2 Skill 3 regularly. A good way to remember is once before you swap weapons each time. Our other boons will be upkept incidentally through use of the skills already mentioned, but most notable is Protection. Generally, I will use all charges of my healing mantra twice at the start of most fights, and then again at the start of any phases. This helps build a buffer of protection so we can hold our last charge later. Simply opening your third tome whenever the symbol is blue will also provide a decent amount of protection, as well as the skill 5 for another application. Though in fights where stability or aegis are needed to block certain mechanics, you should be saving this skill. The same goes for shield 4. Mace 3 will also give a nice boost to protection if you can block a hit with it. Boons out of the way, let's talk about your sources of healing. Firebrand doesn't have many buttons to press to instantly heal a chunk of health in a hurry, and it tends to rely more on layering many healing over time effects to quickly recover its party's health. For those simple burst heals, Relic of the Flock triggers will help quite a lot. It triggers whenever you cast your heal skill on a 10 second cooldown. Note that if Relic of the Flock is on cooldown, your heal skill only heals you. Your other main bursty heals are Staff 2 and Tome 2 Skill 1, as well as Skill 3. You should be casting your symbols on your group off cooldown. These will also heal over time due to a trait. This, along with the periodic healing and barrier from Relic of the Flock, and healing from Staff 4 will deal with most of the general damage your group will take. On fights where you expect to need a lot of healing output, bring Bow of Truth and just cast it whenever you need it. This is also a great panic button to help with healing if you're finding the lack of burstier heals off-putting. If the bow isn't enough or you just didn't bring it on a particular fight, Tome 2 is your ultimate emergency heal kit. Always use the skill 5 first if you intend to use more than one or two skills, as it increases all healing received for 8 seconds afterwards, though it does do no healing of its own. After 5, use 4, then 2 if you have conditions, then 3, and if you're still in trouble, 
just spam one until you're out of pages or the problem is solved. If Staff 2 is up when you leave the tome, you can blast the water field with it for a chunky healing burst. Your dodge roll will also heal, along with your shield 5 if you blow it up early. On fights where you're expected to CC a lot, always bring Sanctuary. This thing is insane, and can be used as an additional healing over time skill in a pinch. In our main kit, we also have access to Axe 3, Shield 5, which CCs on the initial cast, Staff 5, which CCs when it initially is placed, and Tome 1, Skill 3, which all do a modest amount of CC. Our Tome 3, Skill 2, also applies Taunt, which deals solid defiance damage over time, and this skill has a very low cooldown. Firebrand is basically the king of stability and Aegis, two of the most powerful boons in the game. With the amount of Aegis Firebrand has, it can block literally hundreds of instances of damage on even a fight as short as 3 or 4 minutes. In the core build, we have access to Shield 4, the final charge of our Heal Mantra, and Tome 3 Skill 5 for Aegis. But if we opt into bringing Advance along with Mace, our Aegis output becomes pretty insane, adding another two buttons to rotate between to block big hits. Along with the Aegis, Tome 3 Skill 5 also gives stability, preventing your party from being affected by interrupt effects. While you always have this because it's a part of your tomes, you need to opt into other sources of stability. Stand Your Ground is the usual option, as alternating between that and Tome 3 Skill 5 is usually more than enough stability for most fights. There are a couple of fights, mainly Fractal Bosses, where it can be nice to additionally bring the Elite Mantra. Obviously in doing this, you lose out on the quickness from your Elite Shout, so you need to be more judicious with your Mantra uses and not miss people. Now we're going to go over some of the more assorted bits and pieces of support Firebrand can do. Firebrand has a lot of condition cleanse from its Tome 2 skills 2 and 5, and also causes a lot of conditions to passively be cleansed through allied combos because of the near permanent light fields it places. If you additionally bring the cleanse mantra, you are a cleanse machine. We have two projectile denial skills in the regular kit, Shield 5 and Tome 3 skill 3. The Tome 3 skill 3 is actually a reflect, which means it can be used to reflect Matthias's projectiles at the end of Wing 2. If you need more, or you simply struggle to get into the kit and cast the skill in time, you could also opt for Wall of Reflection. While Sanctuary also blocks projectiles, its longer cooldown and smaller size make it a fairly poor choice if projectile hate is required. The last two skills to mention are fun res skills. One is a ranged revive that instantly revives one downed player, and the other will blink you to the target and heal them for a nice amount. It also heals players who are not down, so it has a double use as a nice AoE burst heal. I love these skills a lot, but they're really more useful than the other options. Well, that's not everything, but that was a lot of things about Heal Firebrand. This is one of my favorites, so it was really hard to decide what to say or what not to say. I didn't want to make the video too dense or leave people more confused at the end than they were at the start. I hope I have done a good job for all of you, and if there's any improvements you'd like to see to how I present my guides, let me know down in the comments. If you want to catch me live, my Twitch is linked in the description, along with the Acceleration Raid Training Discord, which is an awesome guild dedicated to teaching raids to anyone with no requirements, and it is where I spend most of my time. Thanks for watching, check out my druid guide to help me with the YouTube algorithm, and I will be back soon. Let me know what healer you want to see next in the comments, no promises though.